Let's take a look at some of the very powerful MIDI key editor features found in Cubase and Nuendo. To open up the key editor, just simply double click on a MIDI part on a project window. Here we'll see our notes. The pitch of the notes is indicated by the piano keyboard on the left hand side. Their length or rhythm is indicated by the timeline going across. This timeline can be viewed in several different formats. So if I wanted to right click, I could change the view to seconds, to simply time code, to samples, or to bars and beats. The lower left hand corner is my window for my controller editing. It's currently selected to velocities or how hard each key was pressed. On my left hand side, I will have my inspector tabs. So if I wanted to load an expression map, adjust my note expression data, my quantization, transposition, and length of settings, they could all be adjusted here in the inspector. Going across the top, I'll have my tools and other icons which can help with my MIDI functionality. Right clicking will access my tools. Now there are many great features that a lot of people miss by using modifier keys. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of what our tools could allow us to do. If I wanted to select a range of notes here, I could lasso the notes and going to the right edge, I could adjust the length of all the selected notes or going to the left edge, I could adjust the start position of each of those notes. If you find yourself often needing to select the same note of the same pitch throughout the entire part, select a note here, hold down the shift key and double click, and that will select every, in this case, E flat three. And if I wanted to, I could use my arrow keys on my computer keyboard to change all their values simultaneously or use my info line here to adjust the values. If I wanted to split a note, I could actually hold down my Alt or Option key and then double click on the note and that will split the note. And if I wanted to glue the note back together, I could use my glue tool. If I wanted to make copies of parts or move notes around, I could come right over here and just freely move my notes like that. But I could also constrain the direction. So if I wanted these notes to fall into the same exact rhythmic placement but a different pitch, since I've moved it up, I can now hit my control or command key and that will constrain the direction. If I wanted to make a copy plus constrain the direction, I could hold down my alt key or option key plus my control or command key, and now I've made my edit right there. And if I want to come here, if I move it in time first, then hold down my alt or option plus command or control key, I can now constrain the pitch. So as I can't change the pitch, but I can only change the rhythmic placement. Holding down my, if I go to the lower right hand corner of note while holding down the alter option, you'll see it turn into a pencil. And if I drag it across, we can just make copies that easily and just kind of fill in the values. Sometimes it can be really hard to edit velocities in scenarios where you have four notes stacked like this. And if you want to edit one note within a chord. So if I hold down my shift key plus command or control, I could actually come here and adjust the value of just one single note within a chord. So this way the velocity, and you'll see that the color will change and that we'll hear the changes as we make them. Uh, so if I didn't want to hear changes, I could turn off my acoustic feedback or our colors could be controlled by velocity, by we could have colorized by pitch, channel, or part, or other settings. So very, very easy to come here. Or if I wanted to select an entire phrase of notes, I could adjust their velocities accordingly there. Or come here if I wanted to adjust their velocities proportionally. So very, very handy editing functions with our object selection tool. To draw notes in, I could just grab my drawing tool and I could draw my notes in. And if I wanted to erase notes, I could come right here, select the notes, and then click on them again with the eraser, or to just simply erase a single note, click on it with the eraser tool. If I wanted to erase every single note after a particular note, I could hold down 
the Alt key with the eraser tool, and every note that follows that particular note will be erased. Now we'll also have a trim tool. So if I have some notes drawn in here and I wanted to just trim the ending of the notes, I could just come right here. I could say, okay, I want these to be a straight trim or I want these to be angled. Holding down the alter option will allow me to trim the beginning of the notes. So if I wanted to create like almost guitar strum effects, we could do stuff like that very easily with our trim tool. Our next tool we'll look at is mute. So if I want to click on a note to mute it or just select an entire phrase and mute it. The following tool will be zoom tool. Now the zoom tool, we could have multiple levels of zoom and sometimes you can get zoom too far in or too far out. What you could do here is as you zoom in, if you double click in an area that will do undo of your zoom controls. Now, if you want to zoom both vertically and horizontally simultaneously, hold down your control or command, and now we could just simply zoom vertically and horizontally, double click, and we're right back to where we were. Now, our split tool will also have some added functionalities. And I could split my notes. But one of the other cool things is if I have a long note, We'll say, we'll come up here, we'll draw in a note for two measures, roughly. Then if I wanted to come here, not only could I split the note, but if I hold down my Alt or Option key, I can now just take that one note and split it into individual sections right there based on my uh, interval that I use to cut and again I have my unlimited levels of undo and if I want to multiply glue them together just come here hold down my alter option now it's all back to one note now we also have great capabilities of working with our controller information in our controller editor so if I wanted to adjust my velocities here I could just use my pencil tool but we'll have dedicated drawing tools as well so one of the tools we'll have is a line tool so if I just wanted my velocities to fade out or to get louder, I could adjust my velocities there. Now we could also use these other tools to draw in other types of MIDI controller. So if we go to our lower left hand corner, I could say I want this to be main volume. Now if I grab my pencil tool, I could draw in my MIDI volume controls. Now sometimes people will, as they draw in their controllers, they realize that their controllers may look a little choppy, kind of like this. And that could be indicative that we don't really have the snap set correctly. So if you want finer resolution, simply turn your snap on or off here. And you could also turn that on or off by hitting J on the computer keyboard. So now that I've turned this off, we now have kind of much higher resolution for drawing in our controllers. Now here we could have our drawing tool. So again, if I wanted to draw in lines for a straight fade out, but we'll also have other tools here. So if I want it to be a parabola, now if I wanted to draw in my parabola and if I hold down my control or command key, I could switch the direction of the parabola. So if I want it to be arched this way versus that way, now we could also have sine, triangle, square wave. So if I wanted to draw in my data here, I could just come here and I can now have, let's say perhaps for a filter sweep. Now if I wanted to change the frequency, hold down my shift key and now I could draw in. Or if I wanted to come here and have kind of a much tighter frequency again. So if I want this to be on every measure, I could do that. Or holding down my shift key if I want it to be twice the frequency. Now if I hold my command key under control key, I could actually choose at what point that controller will start its drawing pattern in. So very, very easy to do your controllers. Now, many times you want may want to see more than one controller. So we could come here and we could actually say, let's create a new controller lane. So I could say, I want to see velocities and my volume or modulation, but we could always store these as presets as well. So if I come right here, I could actually just store 
preset. So when I so when I come right here, I could just say, let's say I want to look at the velocity, volume, and modulation. I could have that, or if I wanted to only look at velocity, I could have my customized presets. Now, one of the great things that was added in Cubase 6 is the ability of having node, node expression. So what node expression would allow us to do is, depending on your instrument, for traditional MIDI instruments and VST uh, instruments prior to version 3.5, we would have to have one controller lane that would be global. But now what we could do is actually just double click on the note and I could choose from my note expression tab that I want this note to have volume changes and I could draw in my volume changes there for that independent note. Now with VST 3.5 instruments, what would allow us to do is to have independent controllers for notes. So if I wanted to have this note have one volume control and I wanted this note to have a different volume control. I could just literally just draw in a crescendo. With VST 3.5 instruments like Halion Sonic, Halion, Pad Shop, Retrolog, you could have polyphonic controllers on the individual notes. Now what's even cooler is how we could do some of this editing. So if I wanted to come here and kind of just trim the events, or if I wanted to tilt the uh, beginning of the event, or tilt the right hand side, or the ending of the event, or kind of just compress the contents. And what's kind of really neat is we have this capability of applying these principles to our standard controllers as well. So if I wanted to come here and look at my volume control, and if I have volume control like this, I can now select the range, and if I wanted to trim my controllers and tilt the beginning, or the end, compress the controllers, we have the same type of editing paradigm. So again, with traditional MIDI instruments and non-VST 3.5 instruments, we could do this monophonically, but with the new VST 3.5 instruments, it's incredibly flexible to have the polyphonic controller support. And if I wanted to have panning or tuning on independent notes, no problem. So very easy. So as you can see, the MIDI editor in Cubase and Nuendo, the key editor, is extremely flexible and powerful.